Now that you have read over this sample budget policy and listed three strengths and three weaknesses that you found in this policy, I'm going to highlight a couple of strengths and weaknesses that KDE has um, come up with um, for this budget policy. So these may be similar to the ones that you found um, or, or different, but these are just giving you some ideas. And then if you didn't notice these, some things that you can write down to keep in mind um, when your council is creating a budget policy if they choose to do so. So the first strength that this policy had is that um, they it provides a good timeline of when budget um, when budgets are reviewed or when things are approved. So you'll see um, here after the tentative March 1st allocation, the committee will develop an annual budget um, in terms of section six. Um, they will present it during its regular scheduled April meeting. Um, and then there was also one where it said that the council will review once it receives its allocation before May 1st. The council will meet with the media specialist during the March meeting. So there's a lot of different dates in here that help the council stay on track um, so that they know when to review things and when to approve things, um, present their budgets and that sort of thing. So it's a good idea to have some of those timelines in there. Another strength that this um, policy had is that it focuses on incorporating evidence-based practices. So just, you know, recently that evidence-based practices have um, been kind of highlighted as something that schools need to be focusing on and councils need to be focusing on when choosing curriculums and textbooks and instructional supplies and materials. And so up here you'll see that um, the council will focus all decisions on student learning and will be focusing on high quality evidence-based research and best practices. Um, and so um, that's good to put in there, especially if your council, you know, is, is being intentional and in doing that um, so that when parents are reading this, they'll, 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 you know, feel confident that the, um, you know, the decisions that are being made, the money that's being spent, and the um, instructional materials that are being used in the school have been based on evidence-based practices. Another thing that's good in here is that it includes a variety of committees. So there's a budget committee here and the purpose of that and what it does and a timeline for that. Um, there's also an ad hoc committee that reviews and recommends textbooks and instructional materials. And this whole section explains um, who, who makes up that committee and how they're chosen and that sort of thing. Um, and then there's also, um, Let's see, that might have been the only the only two, um, but there are you know, a variety of committees in here um, that are used for different purposes to help with those decisions um, that the council has to make, but may want to look outside of the box, especially with um, this committee that's mentioned, this ad hoc committee, including teachers um, from a variety of disciplines and subject areas just to help provide their, um, you know, their expertise in those areas. Another um, good strength about this policy is that it does include a good mission statement and purpose. Um, and so right here, it talks about how their spending will empower teachers, um, allow for flexibility, and make sure that you know it, it's focused on this year's students and the greatest advantage for them. So it has a good purpose of why um, money is being spent and um, you know the process for um, how it's going to help achieve, help students achieve and help empower teachers. So good mission and purpose statement there that is good to have in, those, in that budget policy. And then the last thing um, that's good about this policy is that um, here at the bottom, it has a spot for um, tracking when this policy was adopted, when it was last reviewed and revised. Um, and this is good to have because policies are required to be reviewed um, on an annual basis. And so this will kind of help the council know when it was last reviewed um, to make sure that it's still relevant and, um, you know, will relate to the current school year. So that's something else good to have in a policy. In terms of weaknesses, one weakness is that it doesn't include a procedure for um, amending the budget. So um, it doesn't have a have the process or the you know the protocol to follow if this um, needs to be amended um, and so that's something that could be added 
Um, another thing is that professional development funds, PD funds are not included in here as to how those will be spent or decide, um, you know, decided how they are spent. And so um, that's something that could be added here as well. And then something else um, that we noticed is that it does talk about that money will be spent on the needs assessment or, you know, um, using data from the needs assessment to make decisions. Um, and then at the, it does mention that um, an, a, there's an identified need from data, but it doesn't give any specific sorts of data, like what type of data is being used um, besides the needs assessment. Is there data coming from other sources? So that's also something that could be mentioned in here um, if it's something that the school uses on a consistent basis. So those are just some strengths and weaknesses that KDE noticed. Like I said, they may be similar to yours or different, um, but some things to keep in mind if and when your council does decide to adopt a budget policy. Um, so the next section that we're gonna move on to is um, budget ideas from high achieving schools. So you'll get to look at some, um, some ways that schools use, um, you know, use their budget and wise decisions that they make when they're spending their money. So you can go on to the next section.